Hey there. We talked today in class about related rates. Uh, we did a number of these in class. The completed filled out notes are uploaded on my website, or at least as far as your class got, are uploaded on my website. Um, I have specifically picked five to demonstrate the procedure of what we're doing here with related rates. Okay, so when you look at these notes, um, I gave the definition of related rates, I gave some common equations, um, and then I, I wrote out these helpful steps here, which are what we're going to do when we're working with these word problems. Step one, we're going to draw a picture. Step two, we're going to write the equation or equations being used. Okay, step three, we're going to identify all variables, including their corresponding rates of change. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of the equation with respect to time. We're going to substitute and solve, and we're going to answer the question. Okay, so the first one that we are going to look at here, the first example problem we're going to look at here, is going to deal with these two steps right here, step four and step five the ones that I consider kind of more the procedural aspect of these problems. Right? Step four is we're taking the derivative of the equation with respect to time. This is, in essence, implicit differentiation, which we did last semester. Right? Last semester, I asked you to find dy dx. And I gave you an equation like x squared plus 3y squared equals 7. And so we took the derivative of x squared and got 2x, and the derivative of 3y squared and got 6y, and then we added onto the back of it, we tacked onto the back of it this dy dx, saying that we recognize we're supposed to be taking the derivative of x, that this is our independent variable, and that this y is not an x. And so we tack on that dy dx, recognizing that fact. And then the derivative of 7 which is zero. This was last semester. Related rates, we're doing, still taking derivatives, but now we're taking our derivative with respect to time, with respect to t, right? Which means that if it's not a t, you have to acknowledge that fact. So with this same equation here, this x squared plus 3y squared equals 7, now when you take its derivative, <coughs> if it's not a t, you tack something on the back. Over here, if it wasn't an x, we tacked it on. Over here, if it's not a t, d, d, t, we tack it on. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, but that's not a t, right? And so we acknowledge that fact by tacking on that dx dt. 3y squared is 6y, that's not a t, so you tack on dy dt, and then the derivative of 7 is 0. Right. That's what we're doing there in step four. Step five, we're going to substitute into our equation. We're going to solve for whatever we're looking for. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this with example three. <coughs> example three, they say, find dy dt of y equals one over x cubed minus one when x equals negative one and dx dt equals two inches per second. Right. We're given these two pieces of information and we're asked to find dy dt of this equation. Okay, so we're going to start with taking the derivative. The derivative of y is 1. And then because that's a y and not the t that we wish we were working with, with the related rates, we're going to tack on that dy dt, because it's not a t. Okay, for this left side, you have a choice. I'm uh, sorry, for the right side, you have a choice. Um, you can do quotient rule if you want, or you could rewrite it and make it chain rule, depending on which one uh, you feel more comfortable with. Chain rule potentially might be a little bit faster, but then you have a negative exponent to contend with. So again, you, you need to choose which one you, you think will get you the right answer. Okay? In class, I went with the majority as far as what we wrote, and I did the other one on the whiteboard. So I'm going to go ahead and go with what the majority was, which in every class was quotient rule. If you are interested in seeing the chain rule, email me. I'd be happy to send that off to you if you want to double check. You're going to get the same answer either way. So if you'd like to try the chain rule way. Okay, so we're going to do quotient rule on this side. <coughs> we have our low d high, the derivative of 1 is 0, minus high, which is 1, d low, the derivative of x cubed minus 1, is 3x squared. 
And then because we just took the derivative of an x, which is not a t, we have to tack on dx dt. Every time it's not a t, you need to acknowledge the fact that you aren't working with the independent variable. Okay, and then all over low squared. Okay, technically speaking, you could plug in here if you want. Personally, I like to clean this up a little bit first. So I'm actually going to do that. We know this time 0 is 0. So we're left with negative 3x squared dx dt over x cubed minus 1 quantity squared. Which, if you did it the chain rule way, you're going to get the same answer. Or you should get the same answer. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in. <coughs> we know that our x in this case is negative 1. So we're going to plug that negative 1 into the x's spot. We know dx dt is 2. Make sure it's still on the screen. Okay, we know dx dt is 2 all over negative 1 cubed minus 1 quantity squared. Plugging in x equals negative 1 into that x spot. When you clean this up, negative 3 times negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1, so negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, times 2 is negative 6. In the bottom we have negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 and negative 2 squared is 4. And so we get as our answer negative 3 halves inches per second. Okay, so that's just step 4 and 5 of our helpful steps here. Okay, which we are going to demonstrate in the next four all of the steps. Okay, so here we go. Next one I selected is number five. <coughs> Example five. Let me zoom out here. Okay. <coughs> Example five. We're going to put this in context. We have a ladder ten feet long is leaning against a building. The bottom of the ladder is moving away from the building at a constant rate of one half feet per second. Find the rate at which the ladder is falling down the building when the ladder is six feet from the building. Okay, so we're going to start with our step one, which is draw a picture. Okay, and because this is a triangle, I'm going to go ahead and label these sides A, B, and C. I'm doing this because my guess is that I'm probably going to end up using Pythagorean theorem, it is a right triangle. The other one that would be a possibility would be a trig. You would probably use a trig one like sine theta or cosine theta if you were asked something about an angle of this triangle. But When you look through this word problem, never once do they mention anything about any sort of angle. So I'm, I'm probably not going to use a trig, it's probably going to be Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so one thing you need to know about related rates is if you have a variable in its equation, you're probably going to end up with its rate as well. So we should have a dc dt, a db dt, and a da dt. If you aren't given those for some reason, it's probably one of two reasons. Either one, you're trying to find that, or two, it's kind of a I call it like a no-duh of the real world. And we'll look at what, what that means in a bit here, because this actually has one in this particular problem, and I'll explain why I call it that, right? It, it, it's a problem where it just kind of makes sense when you think about the world and how the world works, right? Okay, so before we get into that, let's go ahead and dissect this word problem a little bit. We have a ladder 10 feet long is leaning against a building. So 10 feet long is the ladder. What is that in my picture here? Well, that would be C. There's my 10 foot ladder. I know it's C and not DC DT because DC DT is a rate, right? This is a rate that C is changing as time passes. C is growing three inches every second or four meters every two 
days, I don't know, something like that, right? It's a rate. C is a measurement, a length, in this case, 10 feet. The bottom of the ladder is moving away from the building at a constant rate of one half feet per second. So what's that? Well, first of all, I know it's one of my DTs, right, because it's a rate. I also see this second in the denominator of my unit, which means that's a time measurement, so it's got to be one of these DTs. Okay, the question is which one? Well, that's where the first part of the sentence comes in. We have the bottom of the ladder is moving away from the building at a constant rate. Where is the ladder moving away? That's down here. Right, here's my ladder moving away from the building. This is DBDT that we've got here. And then you want to be careful. Make sure it's not a negative rate, right? If the sentence read something about falling, you would need to make this one half negative one half. Or if it was shrinking, you would need to make the one half negative one half. Or decreasing, you would need to turn that one half into a negative one half. You need to be able to read those words and see them as negatives, right? In this case, though, the bottom of the ladder is moving away from the building which means that as my ladder moves away, that distance is getting bigger, right? Picture that ladder moving away. That B is getting bigger, which means this is positive, okay? Find the rate at which the ladder is falling down the building. So right here, we already know this is what we're looking for, and it's gonna be negative. My answer should be negative, it's falling down, okay? Find the rate, so I'm trying to find a DDT. In this case, that DT is the one that or regards the ladder falling down the building, which in this case is this DADT. This is what we're looking to find. So find the rate of the ladder is falling down the building when the ladder is six feet from the building, the ladder is six feet from the building. That's my B. So we've got two missing pieces here, an A and a DCDT, which means either we should be able to calculate it or we should be able to figure it out in some way, or potentially, as in some cases, you might end up needing to get rid of that variable, but I would save that for the last, um, kind of a foreshadowing, you're gonna end up doing that with cones, okay? So, here we go. We have our A's missing, B and C though we know, well, using one of our formulas, we can calculate that A. Think about it. If we use Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate what the A is. Go ahead and take a moment and find that. If you don't like using Pythagorean theorem, you could also use Pythagorean triples in this particular case. Okay, if you need more time, which you might, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm gonna go ahead and say what A is here, okay? A in this case is eight. This is a three, four, five triangle only it's doubled. Okay, <coughs> okay DCDT. It's the remaining thing that we don't know, the remaining piece we don't know. In this case, remember, DDT is a rate, right? A rate of change. Well, think about what C is representing. Okay, C is representing how, or sorry, D, C is representing my ladder, which means DCDT is representing how is my ladder changing. Right? As time passes, is it growing? Is it shrinking? How fast is it growing or shrinking? Right? We'll picture a ladder with me. Right? When we start this problem, how long is the ladder? 10 feet. Okay. And three minutes later, how long is the ladder? Still 10 feet. And two decades later, how long is the ladder? Still 10 feet. Right? That ladder's not changing. It's a fixed object. It's not growing. It's not shrinking. Right? That ladder is staying the same. It doesn't change. It has no DDT. That DCDT is zero because it's fixed. It's the nice thing about the ladder problem. Okay, so we've got all those pieces. Now let's go ahead and utilize our formula here, that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And again, we know it's Pythagorean theorem because we're dealing with all side lengths here. There's no angle measurement in there for some reason, right? And we're going to do what we just did on example three. We're going to take the derivative. Okay, from here on out with all of these example problems, I would encourage you as much as possible when I say we're going to do this, pause the video at that point, try whatever it is I say we're going to do, try it on your own. Then start the video again, check it, and continue from there. Right, continue to pause, try it on your own, check. 
pause, try it on your own, check. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that derivative. Okay, the derivative of a squared is 2a, and then because that's not a t, we're going to tack on dA dt. The derivative of b squared is 2b, and then we're going to tack on dB dt. And the derivative of c squared is 2c, and then we're going to tack on dc dt. Okay. Now we can plug in. We know a is 8, 2 times 8 is 16. We know b is 6, and db dt is 1 half, so we have 2 times 6 times 1 half, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 times 1 half is 6, 2 times c, c is 10, which is 20, times dc dt, which is 0. Okay, and now we're going to solve for dA dt. We're going to go ahead and put this in a sentence next. Okay, we're going to address the question. The latter is, now one thing you want to be careful of when you're writing your sentence. The latter is falling down. Okay, that is negative. Right, it's a negative rate, it's falling. That is that negative. The ladder is falling at a rate of three-eighths, not negative three-eighths. I know it's negative three-eighths, but remember that negative is that falling. That's where my negative is, right there. If I put falling and negative three-eighths, that's a double negative, right? They cancel each other out. So you just want to put it's falling at a rate of three-eighths. In terms of units? 3 eighths is dA dt, a over t. Well, a in this case is the height, and height in this problem would be measured as feet. And dt, t in this case is time, and time in this problem is measured as seconds. In this particular example problem, my units happen to match the given rates units. That's not always going to be the case. You do want to think about what this DADT or DVDT or whatever the case may be. You really want to think about what that is representing. Right? Make sure your units correspond. Don't, base, don't make them just match purely because you want them to. They have to actually match in terms of concept. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and do a second one here. Example 9. We have the leadership class is filling spherical balloons with helium at a rate of 4.5 feet cubed per minute. Find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is 2 feet. Okay, So we're going to start with drawing a picture. Remember, with each of these examples, I challenge you when I say we're going to do something. When I say we're going to take the derivative, pause it, try that step on your own, restart the video so you can check the step, and then repeat that process. Okay. So we're going to draw a picture. Here is my spherical balloon. Okay. Next we're going to label what we know. Okay. In this case, the leadership class is filling spherical balloons with helium at a rate. So I know this is a DDT of some sort. And in this case, it's of 4.5 feet cubed per minute. Well, think about what that unit represents. Feet cubed. Cubic units measure something very particular. Right? Feet cubed measures volume. This is DDT of volume. This is my DVDT.
which also helps me know what my equation is going to be. My equation in this case is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed, because right? that's what the volume is of a sphere. And again, we know it's volume because it's feet cubed. So I kind of skipped ahead a little bit there, but we do know our equation. Okay, what else do we know? Well, we know that they're asking us to find the rate, so we're looking for a DDT of some sort, of change of the radius. So they're asking us to find what is dr dt, which means that if we need to find dr dt, we must be given r, right? That r has to be provided, because if you have an, a variable, you're going to have its corresponding ddt, its corresponding rate. Right, so find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is 2 feet. Okay. So here we go. Next up, we're going to take the derivative. The derivative of v is 1 dv dt equals 4 thirds pi is just a coefficient. It's just going to hang out. And we're going to take the derivative of r cubed, which is 3r squared dr dt. Okay. Now we're going to plug in and solve. Okay. So dv dt we found was 4.5. We have, um, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this third and three. So we have 4 pi r in this case was 2. 2 squared is 4. And then dr dt is what we're trying to find, so that's going to stay. And then solving for dr dt, we can divide over this 16 pi here. Okay, so that's my answer. Radius is changing at a rate of 4.5 over 16 pi. And then think about your units. This is dr dt. How would radius be measured in this problem? How is time measured in this problem? Well, radius is a length, so my radius would be measured in feet, and t is time, which would be minutes. In this case, my units don't purely match, right? Like this was feet cubed per minute, this is just feet per minute. Remember, it's because they're different. This is volume, this is length, radius versus volume. Okay, so we've got two more here. <clears throat> I'm actually going to skip number 10 just briefly. We're going to take a look at number 11 first and then come back to 10. Okay, number 11, we are talking about the frame around a circular platform. So let's go ahead and draw that. And then as I go through this, I'm going to label what I know. So again, challenge, pause it, try labeling it on your own, restart it so you can check. Right? Frame around a circular platform is growing at a constant rate of 38 centimeters per minute. Well, a frame, what am I talking about there with that rate? I know this is a DDT, a DDT of what? Circles, it could be circumference, it could be radius. I'm sorry, it could be circumference, it could be area. Oh, but I already know it's not area. Think about what area units are. Area units are squared, so this would have to be centimeters squared for area. So my guess is it's probably going to be circumference, which is 2 pi r. Let's just double check, make sure that makes sense though. Right, so the frame around a circular platform, which is circumference, yeah. Okay, and it's growing at a rate, so this is my dc dt of 38 centimeters per minute. Okay, okay so then they ask, what is the rate? So we're looking for a DDT at which the radius is growing. So I'm looking for dr dt when the radius is 133 centimeters. Okay. 
Okay, so we labeled everything. We have our equation. Next up, we're going to take that derivative. Okay, the derivative of c is 1 dc dt. 2 pi is a coefficient, it's just going to hang out. And the derivative of r is 1 dr dt. And we're going to plug in. dc dt is 38. and solve for dr dt. There's your answer. The radius is growing. At a rate of 19 over pi. And to think about your units, this is dr dt, radius over time. Radius in this case would be measured in centimeters. Time would be measured in minutes. Okay, last but not least <coughs> is number 10. And I saved this one for last because these can be potentially a little bit more tricky, these cone type problems. And the reason why is with this type of cone problem, we're actually going to end up using a ratio based on similar triangles within a cone. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning. Water pours into a conical tank. So let's draw our picture here. The tank in this case is a cone. Pointing into a tank, the tank's height is 10 and its radius is 4. And it's pouring in at a rate of 10 feet cubed per minute. Right? So this is a rate, so it's a ddt. In this case, it's feet cubed. So this is dvdt. which means I already know my equation is going to be one-third pi r squared h. It's the volume of a cone. Okay, how fast is the water level rising? Okay, so fast, that's a speed, that's a rate, we're looking for a ddt. In this case, we're looking at the rate of the water level. All right, so think about what water level would be. Is that dr dt or dh dt? In this case, this is dh dt, right? Water level is a height measurement. So we're asking how fast is that height changing? How fast is that water level changing? When it is five feet high, right? When it's somewhere in there, right? This is that five feet. How fast is this water level in here rising? Okay. So, here's where the similar triangle thing comes in, okay? Because when we look at taking the derivative of v equals one-third pi r squared h, we run into an issue with this r, right? The radius of my water was never given, the dr dt, the rate of my r was never given. And we can't assume in this case that dr dt is zero. We can't conclude that, right? This is different than the ladder problem. A ladder doesn't change. When we start the problem, the ladder is 10 feet. Five minutes later, it's still 10 feet. That rate is zero. In this particular case, though, look at this water level. Here, I don't know what my rate is, okay? But it's gonna be different. My radius is gonna be different than my radius down here. Right? Depending on what time we're at, down here my radius is a lot smaller than here. My radius has grown. I do have a dr dt. I just don't know what it is. Okay, which means if we take the derivative here, we're going to have a, a piece of the problem that we can't answer, that we can't find, and so we won't be able to solve it. Okay, well we fix that by using similar triangles, by using a ratio that exists within cones. And that ratio exists here between the four and the 10, right? 
Okay? In this cone, I can write a ratio to get rid of that r. I can say r equals, and that ratio is going to be, what is my r? My r is 4 over my 10 height. All right, and again, you can check that your fraction's right here by taking this 10, this h, and plugging it in. Okay, when you do that, you get 4 tenths times 10. The tens would cancel, and you'd be left with just r equals 4, which it does. All right, so you know you set up your fraction correctly. If for some reason we had wanted to get rid of the h, we could also have done it to the h. Right? If for some reason they asked us to find dr dt and they gave us r equals, but they didn't give us dh dt and they didn't give us anything about h, right? Okay? h equals, in this particular ratio here, in this triangle we've drawn in, h is my 10 over 4r. Right? Now we aren't going to need this one for this particular problem. We like our h. We, we want to leave our h in there. That's how you get dh dt, which is what they're asking us to find. Okay, but if for some reason you had needed to, that's how you'd set up that ratio. We do like this guy. I am going to go ahead and reduce it to 2 fifths h. And now I can substitute that in. I can take this 2 fifths h and I can put it in the place of my r here. Okay. And then I can clean it up before I take the derivative. That way it's just a nice, easy power rule. 1 third pi. 2 fifths squared is 4 25ths. And h squared times h is h cubed. And now I can take the derivative. Derivative of v is 1 dv dt. 1 third pi 4 over 20 fifths isn't very pretty, but it is a coefficient, and so it can just hang out. while we focus in on the derivative of that h cubed, which in this case is 3h squared dh dt. And now I can plug it in and solve. dv dt was 10, 1 third and 3 cancel. So we're left with pi 4 over 25 times my h in this case, the water level was 5, so this is 25 dh dt. The 25's cancel, so we have 10 equals 4 pi dh dt, which means that my dh dt, if I divide that 4 pi over, is equal to 5 over 2 pi. Okay, so now you can answer my question. The water level is rising at a rate of 5 over 2 pi. And then think about what our units would be. This is dh dt, height over time. Height in this problem would be measured in feet, and time would be measured in minutes. And there you go.